Hello everyone, welcome to another interesting lab session on digital signal processing. In today's lab, we are going to see the concept of interpolation and decimation in time domain. So, uh, let me just open this iLab for you. So, the today's class, so today's topic, our uh, topic of today is interpolation coming into population decimation. Good. So, what is interpolation? So, before I get to the program, uh, what is interpolation? So, interpolation uh, to define it simple, I have values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, how many values I have? I have 6 values. So, if I say I am going to interpolate um, by factor 2. So, uh, what I would normally do is my output would be something like this 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2.5. 3, 3.5, 4, uh, 4.5, 5, 5.5, 6, 6.5. So if you count these, now I have 12 values. So the output I have interpolation by factor 2. So interpolation by 2 doubles the number of values. Doubles the number of values in input signal. That's it. So that's what your interpolation is doing. So uh, I can. Uh, what I can do is uh, after I do so, this interpolation is something that allows me to change the sampling rate according to the bandwidth requirement. So one of the application is uh, to change sampling rate, change of sampling rate according to bandwidth requirement. Good. So uh, if the sampling rate is uh, high. Uh, then you take more number of samples and if the sampling rate is less you choose less number of samples and uh, This doesn't have to happen at the sampling process. So what you sample what happens if you sample the signal and you have stored them on the computer? All right, so you are what you want to watch the video on a 420p quality Then you require only few samples, but if you want to watch the video on 720p then you require more samples Good. So that is what this interpolation allows you to do now, what is decimation? Decimation is the synonym, it's the opposite of uh, interpolation. So, what happens here is, if I decimate by 2, then, okay, so if I decimate by 2, what are the signal? Which one? 1, 2, 3, or I'll just put 1 is to 6. No, if I take this 1 is to 6, and I decimate it by 2, then my outputs are going to be 1, 3 and 5. So my 6 sample has been reduced to just 3 samples. So decimation uh, works by eliminating samples. Okay. Eliminating samples. So you can do, you can do this decimation uh, in, uh, right, you can do the decimation and interpolations um, in time domain and so the next thing I want to tell you is the interpolation and your decimation works in time and frequency domain. So today's program, so today's lab, we are going to see how they work, how they work in time domain. And in the next programming lecture, the next lab, I will show you how they do or how they work on the frequency domain. Alright, so let's uh, get to the program that I have here for you. So the program to do interpolation. So this is the introduction of interpolation. All right. So I am. Uh, I told you what is interpolation, how it works, and uh, uh, let me just get to the program. So the interpolation factor is set to two. So it's gonna double the number of samples. Right. Interpolation factor two. It's gonna double the number of samples. And then your sampling frequency is hundred. Your frequency cycles, the number of cycles in your signal, the periodicity is 2 and your time index, since this is a time domain interpolation, your time index is from 0 to 99. Now, uh, what I am going to do is, I am going to compute the interpolation frequency with sampling. So, what I am doing is, I am taking the sampling frequency and I am multiplying it with interpolation factor. So, this is going to tell what is my new sampling frequency, what is the new sampling rate, I will just put because the interpolation, because the interpolation process increases the sampling rate by increases the sampling rate by a factor of what? I. That I is equal to here the interpolation factor, interpolation factor. 
So what was the interpolation factor? So the interpolation factor is 2. My sampling rate is going to double. Because before I had 100 samples. Now I'll have 200 samples, which means 200 samples per second. So my sampling rate has doubled. All right. So I can just relate directly, but some, it can it doesn't have to be in that manner. Uh, it doesn't have to be exact double. It can be in uh, different. But we don't want to go into that. You know that multi rate we don't want to talk about right now. We'll just stick to a simple interpolation. So I'm just saying that if your interpolation factor is double, uh, then the number of samples get double, and your sampling rate is also getting doubled. Okay. And now uh, what I'm doing here, this is something you don't have to do. You know, if you, it is I'm just doing this so that I get my scale uh, in zero to one. So the x-axis, the time axis is scaled to zero to one. So which means my time index, which is from uh, 100 samples, zero to 99. I am dividing it by the sampling frequency, which is 100. So the range I get is from zero to one. I am just keeping this into zero to one so that um, I can show you the outputs in a better way. Uh, if I skip this line, it's just uh, I mean, like it doesn't have any effect on the interpolation uh, output. All right. So the next is the new time index. So the new time index I have to do because the new time index will be the time index after interpolation. So it has to in this. Uh, why I've done? Uh, okay, I can now explain this. In this zero to one, uh, before I I'm having only hundred samples, but now in this range zero to one, I have to occupy two hundred samples. Right. My sampling rate has increased. So which means I have to make provisions for that uh, I have to give them places, I have to give them place in the time axis. So what I am doing is I am taking the new time index to be zero is to the step size is now one upon the interpolation factor. Good. And then my new time axis again between zero to one. So this also optional line. So my new time axis is again uh, scaled, is again scaled to zero to one. But now it, this can occupy 200, this can occupy only 100 because here the step size is 1. So I'll just put it as here. 1 is to 99 and here it is 0 to 1 is to 99. So this is the new time index and the new time axis. Okay, done. So that much is the setup that we need. Uh, and now we are going to do the interpolation. Uh, the input signal is taken as uh, sine 2 pi ft. So this is what we are very much familiar with this, uh, at least in this lab. It is sine 2 star pi star f star t. So that is the formula here. So f is the number of cycles, t is the time axis, the x axis, and the interpolation. So I am just going to use the interrupt 1 function because I am. In, uh, why I don't write the code? I could write the code. Um, I, I can maybe just like I showed a moving average. So this is an average. So what I do is I take two samples, one and two. I take the average, 1.5. That is the. I can do that, but um, it is not something. It's not a simple code uh, to write for all the interpolation factors. For two, it will work. If I change the interpolation factor to three, then I have to make adjustments according to that. And uh, so I am just going to use this function for this program. And even for uh, decimation, this program will work fine. And then uh, we'll see. Okay. So then I'm using this function: time axis, input signal, new time axis, and then I'm plotting the output. That is it. That is the interpolation in time domain for my decimation. So uh, what I have to do is I'll just show. I'll just put here for uh, decimation. I don't have to do much. I just have to make uh, the factor is equal to one upon. So I just have to make this 2 to be 1 upon 2. That is my decimation. Good. So uh, let me just uh, run this program for you. And I'll show you the outputs. So you see the program here. Uh, this is my original signal. It is having 100 sample points from 0 to 1. And now here I have 200 sample points. Good. You can see it's more populated than the signal. Let me increase to 3. I am increasing the interpolation factor to 3. Oh, I am seeing more dense output because the number of sample points is now 300. Alright, so let me increase the frequency cycle. So here I am having 2 cycles. So let me increase to 3 cycles. I will run it. Now I am seeing 3 cycles. One, one cycle, one full cycle is 1 high and 1 low. So I am having 3 highs and 3 lows which is my 3 full cycles. And then the interpolated signal for interpolation factor of 3. Now for decimation, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to make this 1 by 2. So this is my decimation. So the decimation I can show in the same program. Now if you see, I'm getting only 50 samples. So before I was having 
100 sample in my input and this is my not interpolated signal this is my decimated signal so i am just getting the decimated output good and then i am going to do this three and i'm going to get only 30 samples 100 divided by three i'm getting very less see the decimation eliminates the sample it reduces the sampling rate so this is my decimation and that so before if it is just three i put three then that is my interpolation good so this is my um, uh, program for interpolation and decimation and time domain next i'll see you with the same interpolation and decimation and frequency domain Let's uh, see uh, interpolation and decimation in frequency domain. So we have just completed uh, uh, how to do interpolation and decimation in time domain. So I'm going to show you uh, how this interpolation and your uh, decimation can work in frequency domain. So what the idea is, so the idea is to, we take the FFT of, you all know what uh, interpolation is, right? So we take the FFT of the signal and then we split the FFT into two halves and then we pad zeros. We put zeros in the middle of the FFT. So you take an FFT, uh, you, you divide it into two halves, you, you cut it in the middle, and then you fill the middle with zeros, and, and the number of zeros is equal to the interpolation factor. So if the interpolation factor is, say, two, then uh, you have to fill with that many zeros. So we'll come to that, okay? And then uh, we take the inverse FFT. So this is how you do the interpolation in frequency domain. So uh, we are having, what are the parameters in the code? We have a sample frequency, we have a signal frequency, and then we have an interpolation factor of, uh, I'll just give it as two at this point, uh, we'll then we we'll scale it up to three and four. So the time axis, the programs are pretty much the same. The time, this is a time index, so this is scaling from zero to one, right? So this will get the range uh, to be from zero to one. And then your input signal is to pi ft. So this also is known to start pi star f star t. All right, so I've got my input signal. So now let's come to the interpolation. So what I'm taking is I'm taking the FFT of the signal. Good. This is my input signal. I'm taking the FFT of my input signal. And then I'm, I'm computing what is the length of my FFT. So the length of the FFT is equal to the length of my uh, input signal. Uh, if you know the signal, uh, if you know the FFT property, or you can take uh, just you can take the signal FFT. You can just take it as uh, length of the FFT. So I'm just taking the computing the length of your FFT, and then your zero pad. So how many zeros we are gonna pad? That is given by this formula: round signal length into interpolation factor minus one. So when the interpolation factor is just two, it's gonna be two minus one. So the number of zeros is gonna be the same as your signal length. And uh, okay, so it's, we are calling it only signal length. So I can just keep it as uh, input signal, not a problem. Right? It's gonna be the same. The FFTs and uh, your signals are the same. So um, yes, we compute how many zeros. And then what we are doing is I am taking. I'm, this is the middle point. So I'm I am splitting. This is the first half of the FFT. So I'm taking the signal FFT, the first half, and this is the second half of my FFT. So that middle. Uh, which is the middle of that FFT is computed with this, right? Signal length plus one upon two. So odd or even, this will take care of that problem. So this is the mid symmetry. And so let's say it's 10, uh, 10 plus 11 by two, then it's gonna be six. Look, 5.5 seal, six. Let's say uh, I'll give some examples. So let us say the length is 100. So 100 means it's gonna be what? 101 by two, then it's gonna be 51. The midpoint so 100, 100 means the midpoint is 50.5 and that's going to be 51 and then for 99 it's going to be 50 so the midpoint is going to be 50. good so if you see the index is from 1 to 100 so which means the 51 makes sense and um, it is from 1 to 99 the midpoint is 50 so this is the how you get the midpoint and then you put the zeros in between. So in between the two FFTs, you put the zeros and then you compute the IFFT and then you take the real values. So after you do the IFFT, you take the real values of the Fourier transform and then that is pretty much it. Then you plot your time interpolated signal. So this is for the new time axis computation. So this is divided by sampling frequency. You can just work this out. I have explained this to you in the time domain, the same formula we are using here. 
uh, 0 to length so there it was 0 to 99 so here it is 0 to length because the length is going to be somewhat like 200 so 0 to 200 divided by sampling frequency into interpolation factor so this will take it from 0 to 1 but i am interested in this concept so the concept of interpolation and frequency is split the fft's uh, put the add the zeros uh, in between take the inverse and uh, take the real of the real part of the inverse and then plot the output so now when i plot the output i get this same thing i can good so i break set to three i get it all right good so this is how you do the interpolation in frequency domain now i'm going to show you how to do the decimation in the frequency domain so for the decimation in the frequency domain the logic that i'm going to go with is you compute the fft of the signal you split the fft into four equal so for decimation of two factor two you compute you know you take this you split this into four equal parts and then remove the first and last part so because we are getting rid of samples remove this fft1 and fft4 keep only the center part the four middle center and then you take the inverse fft and that is your decimation so you remove samples in this manner so this is the logic that i'm going to use all these lines are the same and here i have taken the fft and then i'm eliminating so what i'm doing is i am calculating that one fourth so signal length into decimation factor upon two so the decimation factor is one by two so this becomes one by four good one by four so i'm removing signal underscore fft of one is to click so one fourth at the beginning i am removing the first and last part of your fft so i am removing what one fourth of fft in the beginning and end so we are removing this much one fourth of fft i am making it as zero and this is like equal to removing it right so that will just delete that from your signal fft and the last one fourth is also getting and then i am just computing the inverse fft so i am just taking the inverse fft and after that i am plotting the output see now it is made a signal so the samples are reduced by a factor of two so this is the decimation logic and uh, interpolation for frequency so you have two options to do interpolation you can do it either in the time domain and which is mostly uh, we prefer for interpolation we prefer the time domain and for uh, decimation also we prefer the time domain uh, algorithms but there is also a way to do it in the frequency domain using the FFT properties uh, using the uh, 48 transform property by adding zeros and uh, flipping the FFTs you can do the interpolations and the decimation hope this is clear for you i'll see you next with more programs thank you